internet. We are back. It's Paul. It's Matt. We are here to talk about the exciting new show, American Gods. Uh, this is uh, season one, episode one. And uh, we're both excited about it for uh, slightly different reasons. One, uh, for me, Neil Gaiman. Oh, yes. It's one of my all-time favorite authors. For you, it's Brian Fuller, the director. No. No? He's never directed an episode. He's never directed an episode. For you, Brian Fuller, the showrunner. Yes, that's the word he is. You are uh, <laughs> you're a, you're a big fan. Yes. And that goes back to Hannibal. Yes. And uh, Pushing the, Daisies. Pushing Daisies. Wonderfalls. Wonderfalls. Um, uh, Mockingbird Lane. <laughs> All right. There's a deep cut, I uh, assume. Yes. I haven't heard of it. No, it, it was a pilot that never aired. Okay, there you go. So his adaptation of the, uh, what is it, the Munsters. Oh, very good. So, uh, so yeah, so we're coming at this with uh, excited eyes. And, ah, mm, excitement. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so it's American Gods. The story was written in the early 2000s. Here it is. Bing. So, what's kind of interesting about this is, you know, on, we've we've done a few different series. We, we've we've discussed a few different series. We've uh, Westworld. We've talked about Westworld. Obviously, was just all about theory crafting. Well, mm -hmm. who's the man in black? What's mm -hmm. going to happen next? Mm -hmm. Oh, is that guy that guy? Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah. blah. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked. We're talking actually tomorrow. In fact, about leftovers. Yes. The latest latest episode of that. Please tune in for that. Uh, leftovers was based on a book, like you know, hey, like this, but. In this case, season two and three of Leftovers went past the book. So now it is still about theory crafting, and it, although it is based on a book, it, it is it is no longer based on the literature. Who's he? Is he the other guy? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we, of course, Game of Thrones, based on a book, and yet the books aren't all written. Yeah, and so true. there's a mixture of, oh, that's what's coming in the book. But then a lot of, who's that guy? I don't know. Yeah. Whoops, he hasn't written that yet. Yeah. So that's that's kind of his own little quasi thing. Well, this, at the moment, season one, episode one, this has all been written. Yes. So there's really no theory crafting to be done in this show. Yes. Um, and we are, in the, it's a little weird because it's pretty easy to know what the plot is. If you were really like, I wonder what happens in this in this show. You could do this. You could wiki it. I don't know. You could find out in a you few could. minutes pretty much who the characters are yep. and where it's going. Yep. But that's fine. Yep. Do it if you sure. want because yep. it's cool and it's neat. And I think, you know, the part of the joy is just seeing how Brian Fuller is going to visually encapture the stuff that's uh, that's on the page. Sure. And that's one, one of the cool things about Neil Gaiman is he, I always thought his writing is very cinematic. Hmm. It's visual. Hmm. Uh, this show, much like Neil Gaiman's books, not boring. No. Uh, this is not a sitting in a tea room discussing <laughs> philosophy. This is like, no. it's a hard R, yes. I would say, yes. as well. Yes. There's a lot of violence. Yes. There's some sexy, sexy sex. Yes, nudity. There's some uh, some language. Yes, there is some, some language. Don't yeah. bring, the, the kids probably no. should be, Definitely not. you know, Definitely take not them to bed no. first. That's right. All right. Uh, so, or put them up for adoption. You know, that might work too. Put them up, put them up for adoption. That's a yeah. I mean, that's an extreme, but that's what we're about here. Extreme. Oh, are we? Uh, all right. So let's do. I guess a quick synopsis. That's kind of what we typically do on these things uh, before we discuss some of the intricacies. So we open uh, with the uh, Vikings originally landing uh, here in North America. Yeah. Now this is also. I mean, I'm not gonna. We're not gonna necessarily point out every situation in which the show is different from the books, but on situations, there might be a few times when something is notable, and we'll mention it. This is one of those times. I'll come back around to it and note how it was slightly different in the book. But basically, for the show, the Norse show up. Uh, they are Don't immediately like disenchanted with the place. <laughs> <laughs> the guy gets like a pin cushion of arrows. Almost a comic. Yes, See, where the yes. guy literally gets hit with like kind of humorous. 300 arrows in one guy. Right. And they're like, all right, let's get out of here. Can't well, because the wind's blowing. To make it more humorous, <laughs> the next guy says, well, let me try. Oh, no, one. <laughs> <laughs> and then he decided, well, maybe not. Uh, so the wind isn't blowing. So to uh, basically incur the favor of Odin, the Norse gods, they start 
they uh, take they're, take eyes out. Yeah. That's a uh, Odin has one eye, and so they're like, oh, let's yeah. let's give ourselves one eye. They basically they fight each other. Yeah. <laughs> Very bloody. Yeah. Again, another grossly comedic, almost Monty Python with the with the Black Knight. The <laughs> the arm holding a sword that's flipping through the air and then sh- cuts through a guy's yeah. neck. It's like, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> So they made it uber bloody. Yeah, they did. And uber bloody. uber bloody. And the wind eventually starts to blow. Of course, they're like, it worked. Thank you. It worked. And they sail sail away. Yeah. And the idea is that the rituals that they did for these gods, uh, st- and they made a totem that looked like Odin or the gods, and they left it there. And so those rituals, that energy, that the worship qualities that they they left it so that when the Vikings eventually came back, there's a, you know, like Leif Erikson comes back, his gods are waiting for him because they, they basically permeated the air of North America with the gods from the old world. So that's kind of the intro. <laughs> First scene. First scene. <laughs> uh, we then meet our protagonist, Shadow Moon. Yes. Uh, he is uh, in prison. Yes. He's about to be released. He's with a couple of days from being released. He's and got they, a buddy. Are you talking about low key? Yes, Leismith? I am talking about low key. Which, Leismith. if you okay, we'll, he's got a buddy. We'll mention that's all. Okay, he's got a buddy. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll come back to that he's as well. He's a buddy, but he's a buddy. Um, so Who also appeared in Hannibal. What? <laughs> nice callback, sir. All right, the actor, uh, the god. Okay, so Shadow Moon's about to get out. He gets to you know they're nice to him. Yes. They let him out a few days early. Because uh, he finds out, he actually has a phone conversation first with his wife to go, I'm coming home. She's yes. like, oh, it's going to be great. Uh, there's a surprise party for you. Um, the surprise is she dies. Yes. So he's let out early to go to her funeral. Um, notably on a Wednesday. Um, so he gets to the airport. Uh, oh. They don't have his ticket. Or, or actually gets out on a Tuesday and then it's only a Wednesday that he has to get on the flight. Um uh, he remembers back to a conversation he has with his buddy in jail that says, hey, don't mess with the bitches at the airport. Yes. Um, and um, that's also another slight deviation from the books. Uh, that actually didn't come through low key. Ah. That came through the guy. Yeah, somebody <laughs> The else. guy who was, was like, yeah, I actually got you. I got out. But I'm back in because <laughs> I argued with the woman at the airport and she pushed the button and I got, I'm back here. Um, so he takes the high road and instead of arguing with her, decides to get another ticket for later, uh, and does. So basically this is all setting up a meeting with Mr. Wednesday. Yes. So he gets on on the plane. He's double booked. They put him in first class. He's sitting next to Mr. Wednesday. Mr. Wednesday. Oh, fancy meeting you here. Um, and Mr. Wednesday, uh, has a proposition for him. Yes. Basically, Mr. Wednesday is a kind of a shady con man, uh, and and in fact, Shadow Moon watches him con his way in first class. Correct. So he's like, "Okay, I know who you are now." Ish. I don't know who you are, but I know what, he, what you are. And uh, I don't remember this in the book quite this way, but at that point, um, Shadow begins to critique. Ah, you went with that ploy as opposed to some other ploys, which uh, I felt like it was that wasn't discussed until later. I think, anyway. I think you're right. So, like, yeah, we, we learn that Shadow is a, a, knows about con people yes. himself. He, he, is, he is familiar. Um, he rejects when tries to reject him politely. Yes. His, 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 his advances. As he does in the book. Right. Um, and proceeds to uh, head off toward the funeral. Yes. We do see then... Um, I don't know if this is where we cut away, but um, the Bill Quist scene. Yes. Um, so <laughs> this is with Joel Murray, who we saw in The Leftovers. What? <laughs> All right, nicely done, sir. I thought okay, yeah, that was familiar. Okay, anyway, so this was a <laughs> this was straight out of the book. Yes. Uh, and I was. I knew it was early in the book, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if in the first episode, how they're going to take <laughs> this on. And they did it. They did. So basically, Bilquis is a guy. I mean, we'll discuss 
this whole gods in America thing. That it's called American Gods, so it's not really much of a spoiler. We're going to spoil things. It is a little weird because we, you know, it's like we're going to mention some stuff that's probably hasn't shown up in the TV show yet, but we're not going to go out of our way to do that. Uh, just know that we might be talking about some things that, like, oh, that's actually so and so or whatever. Yes. But, okay. So anyway, in this case, straight out of the books, and I was thinking, you know, Bilquis is a goddess, uh, and in her American incarnation, she uh, gains power through sex. Yes. And she basically devours men with yes. her genitalia. Yes. Now, in the book, she was a prostitute. She was a prostitute. That's an interesting change. Because yeah. also, think about it. This was like 2001 or something when yeah. the book was written. They're still so, prostitutes. So the, but the idea of like uh, uh, computer Internet dating. dating yeah. Internet dating really wasn't much of a thing at that point. No, so not. now it's like, oh, well, then she could just be e-harmonying her way yes. to dudes. And so she I mean, does. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's... It's it's a it's like this horror movie thing, but yes. also done in a way that it's like like he he's never actually in pain. No, he just disappears. Yes. So anyway, uh, well done, well done by the full. I mean, they had to do it somehow, and they yeah, pulled no, it they, off. Yeah, it was well done. So we now cut to uh, is he at the funeral at this no. point? No. Oh well, I guess. Uh, no, because he meets him in the bar before the funeral. Okay, so the bar scene happens first. So in the bar scene, uh, basically Wednesday is back to proposition him again. Yes. Hello, I would like you to work for me. Um, and then he informs him that his friend is dead, the one who thought he was going to give him a job. That uh, Yeah, Wednesday knows a hell of a lot about Shadow Moon. Yes. More than he should. Yes. Like, oh, right, you were in prison. Uh, oh, yeah, that guy that's going to offer you a job, he's dead. Uh, you know, uh, here's the paper with your wife's uh, picture and the friend's picture, picture yeah. too. Because um, they were both in the same car accident. Yes. As it turns out, they were uh, having an affair themselves. But he, he doesn't find that out then. Right, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can kind of tell that Wednesday knows. At well, first, he was thinking, oh, they were planning for his party. Because they did say she knew right. the She's surprise like, well, party. Oh, Robbie and I will be planning your party <laughs> together with their clothes off, whatever. But yeah. Um, so, uh, at this point we meet a leprechaun. Yes. Um. A rather tall leprechaun. Yes. Mad Sweeney. Yes. So Mad Sweeney is, again, he, and he even mentioned something like, they're like, oh, shouldn't, aren't you shouldn't a drinker be... or something? And he's like, oh, stereotypes. Yes. But he's basically an Irish stereotype. Yes. And, uh, again, he's taken on the, the... Whatever the motif of what an Irishman is in 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 the stereotype of an American, right? He's a drunken fighter guy. Yeah, and so he's 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 embraced that as part of his because he's a somewhat of a god himself, right? I mean, that's what we're saying. He's he's a mythical being, certainly. Um, Leprechauns are mythical beings. So he's the Americanized version of this mythical being, and he goads. Uh, Shadow Moon into fighting him. Yes. Basically, eventually, nothing seems to be working, and then he finally talks about his wife. Yes. And once he starts uh, talking about the dead wife, da, time for fisticuffs. Yes. And they both, they, you know, there's a, there's a you give and take. You don't actually see the fight resolved. Does not get resolved. Uh, they both get as... hit quite a bit, but at the end, it's Shadow Moon doing the wailing. He's punching on his face. Uh, they punch each other, and in the final shot before they cut is both of them about to hit each other. So you don't really know who wins, and it's not that important. Right. Well, I'm just saying, you see, eventually, Matt Sweeney's got his face all covered with blood. And, yeah. Well, know, and Shadow Moon, then not too good off yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, As a reward for fighting him, Matt Sweeney gives, very notably here, a gold coin. As leprechauns do have gold coins. Uh, this is the gold coin that eventually, um, Shadow Moon tosses into the grave of his dead wife. Yes. That, uh, is this just a thing we mentioned? It happens in the first episode. No, but I mean, what, that gold coin has It will figure later on. It'll figure later. Actually, in episode two. <laughs> uh, it's, it's coming. Yeah, probably, it's probably within the first few seconds of episode two. Yes. You'll, yeah. you see the effects of that. You see the effects of that. But yes, he tosses the coin uh, onto the grave. Uh, that's also the scene at the funeral, and then at the gravesite we have the 
wife of the dead guy, the yes, his Robbie. Friend, so his friend had an affair with his wife. Yes. And his friend's wife is at the funeral being angry and drunk. Yes. And she wants to uh, get vengeance. Yes. By basically having sex with uh, Shadow Moon in the cemetery. Yes. So over the bodies. Yes. Yeah. They can see in theory. And, <laughs> uh, still and Shadow Moon rejects this advance. Yeah. Interestingly. He tries to rape him, basically, but no, he resists. He's pretty strong, so. He's a strong guy. Uh, but you meant, you, you uh, showed me this article where Neil Gaiman basically stood up for this scene. Yes. Yes. Like, like yeah, apparently Brian Fuller was like, uh, we're going to have oral sex in this scene. Yes. And Neil Gaiman's like, nope. Uh, if you do, I will. I will, I will step in front of a bus, and the suicide note will tell why I stepped in front of a bus. <laughs> right, that was that was how strongly he phrased his objections to uh, having this moment, uh, because he his his point was Shadow Moon wouldn't do that there, and he wouldn't do it uh, for this reason. I mean, he he still has feelings for his wife. Yes, uh, it's her body, so you know he he, he would not be uh, doing that in that in that moment. Um, so instead, they just have this uh, emotional hug yes. moment yes. where they they both lost yes. something. Um, so then uh, we have the meeting up with the technical guy, oh, the technical boy. Right, yes. He's walking away, and that's when the he gets sucked into this weird technical realm. Yeah, he, he sees the little weird glowing box on the side of the road yes. and like pokes at it. And it latches onto his face and um, takes him into this uh, the realm where uh, we meet uh, the technical boy. I thought they called him like that. I forgot forgot his actual name. But they called him the fat kid in the book because yeah. he is he was kind of like comic book store guy from The Simpsons, except a younger <laughs> version of that. In the in the show, he's a thinner guy. He, but the idea is he's young because and pimply faced because. Yeah. He is a young god, right? He is one of the new gods uh, that America worships technology. Uh, so there's going to be, as we find out, a battle between the old gods and the new gods. He would represent the new gods. Mr. Wednesday represents the old gods. Uh, so... Yeah, technical boy. That's what it says. Technical boy. Okay. That's what I thought. So um, now this is there is a difference here in the book as well in that they yes. combine two scenes. Yes, you're right. They do. In the first in the books, the first time they meet and it, the conversation is roughly the same. He's uh, given a message. He's given a message and then kicked out of the uh, limo that he's in. Yes. Uh, told to deliver a message to Wednesday. In this one, obviously in the in the show, it's like kill him. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't happen until later in the books. Like he, there's a second meeting and it's like, all right, fine. I'm just really going to kill you off. So they they just took the two meetings and put them into one. Yeah. For for the sake of time, I guess. Um, in fact, I did a little look through the book to see, like, where, roughly where they left off on the first episode. Yes. It's roughly page 50. Mm. But that second fight, the second the second yes. meeting that rose in the fight is actually page 150. Uh. So... It, anyway, they're give or take a hundred pages. Give or take a hundred pages, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I guess in a, a, they, they kick him their, out, they and they're out. all really beating the crap out of him. They're about to, when, they're about to kill, hang him magically. Yes, they hang him, and then magically they all start splitting in two. Yes, <laughs> and <laughs> blood is flying everywhere, and we're not sure at this point. The noose magically in cuts the sh- in the show, right? In the show uh, purposes. Why this is happening? Uh, we will find out uh, very, very soon. Methinks. Um, so that's that's and that's where the episode leaves off. So just to oh, and also oh, actually no wait. Wednesday descri- tells them to go to Chicago, or that is yeah, that in the after uh, trailer? The, after they uh, have the fight, then he wakes up and they're he's in the car and they're discussing uh, stuff. So it's really oh well, that was and then that's where he goes to the funeral. So this is after the funeral. Yeah, yeah. So he's already, you know, Wednesday has already said, okay, now we're going on to whatever we do, but you go ahead and take care or go to your funeral. So yeah. Right, that was it. And actually, very importantly, uh, at the bar uh, when they're drinking mead. Yes. Uh, that's very ritualistic. He is making a compact. Yes. And, he, and, and so this mead is almost like a spell. 
basically. You know, once he drinks the third cup, it, act, it even says, the second one strikes the deal, the third one's the charm. Yes, and he actually tells him, too, what the responsibilities are. And one of the things that, when I first heard it in the book, I thought, well, okay, he's just saying it. But no. It's pretty damn important. Pay attention. If when you, he says, if you, oh, if I should ever die for any reason, you'll have to hold my vigil. Sounds like a little, eh, throwaway end to your uh, contract. But no, it's going to come back. Pretty important. And since it's charmed now, he's, and they spit on the palm. and Like, all that stuff is ritualistic. It's a, it's a, a part of this ritual to say, you are now bound to me. You're my man. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so he's now basically the bodyguard for Mr. Wednesday. Uh, and they're headed to Chicago. Our neck of the woods, we're actually, this is happening from the loop. Yes. So we're, we're near, they're coming to us, is my uh, point. Yes, so they are, yes, they they're headed our way. Hi, Mr. Wednesday. Uh -huh. um, so at this point, spoiler alert, we've already spoiled the crap of stuff, but um, Mr. Wednesday is Odin. I don't even think, I think they've even mentioned that, I think, in some of the trailer material. But so I'm not. I don't think it's a huge spoiler to say, Mr. Wednesday not is old. huge. Uh, and the reason he's called Mr. Wednesday is because Wednesday is is Votan's day, which is Odin's day. Uh, in Norse mythology, uh, the various days of the week, uh, several of them got named for Norse yeah. gods. So Thursday, Thor's day. Thursday, Thor's day. Uh, Friday is uh, Frigga. Frigga's uh, day. The Tyr is Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> Saturn, Saturday. So they threw in Roman. I think I think the Roman days kind of got moved around, you know, like supplanted by uh, Norse days at some point. Because, for instance, um, Tuesday in French is Mardi, Mardi Gras happens on a Tuesday, name for the god Mars, god of war. Tyr is the god of war and justice in the Norse mythology, so they just replaced one god of war with another. Uh, and then, of course, um, uh, Sunday, Monday are sun and moon, so those are like named for those particular uh, celestial things. Mm. But, so anyway, so Odin calling himself Mr. Wednesday is this little conceit to say. Little, like, <laughs> this hint. is my day. Mm. Oh, well, mm. well, yeah, yeah. Much like, so the reason that they didn't name, I think, low-key Lysmith in the show yes, was because on the written page it was a little more deceptive because he was like known for his calmness. So he was known as low-key Lysmith, though. L O W K E Y. Low key Lysmith. But if you just said it, there's my buddy, Loki. Low key Lysmith. You're like, oh, wait. My, my buddy, Low key. Yeah, so it's low key. key. It's Loki in disguise low key. as his uh, uh, cellmate. We also do learn that Shadow's been reading a lot in prison. Yes. And from the books, we learn. Uh, books. Uh, the book. We learn that uh, Loki was kind of inspirational to. Gave him Herodotus and oh. some other books to oh. read. So, um, you know, it's kind of pushing him in that direction. Um, I thought, actually, I would read the entire book. No. Um, <laughs> just the, there's a little short quote that Neil Gaiman chose to put at the front of his book. It's kind of a, hey, this is what my book's about. And so, it's what the show is about. Uh, that's how I would read it really quickly. So, this is, uh, he takes a quote from... Richard Dorson's American Folklore and the Historian. Uh, whatever. Good, good. Uh, but So here's a quote. One question that has always intrigued me is what happens to demonic beings when immigrants move from their homelands? Irish Americans, remember the fairies. Norwegian Americans, the Nisser. Greek Americans, the Vrikolakas. But only in relation to events remembered in the old country. When I once uh, asked why such demons are not seen in America, my informants giggled confusedly and said, do a, yeah, giggle, a confused giggle. <laughs> that's it. That's a, that's a confused giggle. Mm. Uh, they're scared to pass the ocean. It's too far. Pointing out that Christ and the apostles never came to America, mm. which Mormons might disagree with. Yeah, but, would, uh, but, but otherwise... The apostles, huh? Point being, we do we remember these mythologies as things over there. Norse mythology, oh, that's all in Scandinavia. Mm. That was all another time and place. Mm. And Neil Gaiman is basically saying, well, maybe it's not another time and place. Mm. Well, what if that mythology, if the if the cultures 
are here. Maybe the mythology is here as well. Mm. And so there's a series of gods that have all adapted to American culture and surviving. Mm. They, they need to be worshipped to survive as an entity. And so how do you survive as a god in this new construct? So, uh, so these gods have adapted. Yes. And, you know, this is what we're going to see as we go along the various gods. So we've already met Odin, a leprechaun, Bilquis. I have a feeling we, that the guy who is writing the journal oh, story. I've met him, but we've seen him. Yeah, it might be Mr. Nancy. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Well, maybe. We'll, see, th we'll so. see that coming later. As they come to Chicago, we're about to meet up with some Slavic gods. Yes. Uh, like a family of them. Uh, pretty. This will be an interesting part of the story too. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see how they pull this off. Um, so, yeah. What are some other takeaways? Uh, I mentioned Neil Gaiman being cinematic in his writing. Uh, that stems from his first really popular work, which was the Sandman series, mm. uh, graphic novels. Yes. Um, and in fact, the main character from the uh, the Sandman, the Sandman. Uh, he's the uh, keeper of dreams, mm. so he's, it's a mythology there as well. Mm. Uh, and you see that that keep that dream mythology kind of carried through several of his works, even if they're not necessarily directly sequels, let's say, to the Sandman. And in this case, in fact, you do see uh, that Shadow Moon has dreams. Every time he closes yeah. his eyes, pretty much, he has yeah. a dream. It's very strange dreams. A lot of the times, his dreams seem to involve the World Tree, mm -hmm. uh, Yggdrasil. Mm -hmm. Which is a Norse. Well, it's a lot of. There's a lot of mythologies that have a that concept, but mm. the Norse mythology in particular has has a big world tree concept. Uh, he sees uh, a bison mm. with flaming eyes. Yes. Uh, that would be a very popular Native American uh, mytho mythological creature. Mm. Um, and that, in fact, right there, you just see that's American gods, right? So it's like here's the world tree from Norse mythology with a buffalo in front of it. Yeah. It's like American gods, Americanized versions of religion and and myth. Um, so yeah, what other uh, interesting points dost thou have? It's good, sir. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot. I mean, I. I'm thinking it, uh, my sort of experience watching it was, uh, maybe I didn't appreciate having read the book first. <laughs> oh, in other words, you'd rather come at it blind. Um, I'm wondering if I would have enjoyed it more coming blind. Uh, there are times when I don't mind being spoiled, but it's sort of, you know, I mean, I guess either wanting it to diverge more from the book or... I see. Um, just getting used to the fact that I kind of know what's going to happen. You know the plot, right. Yeah. And it is a plot, I mean... Some stories are more plot-based, some are more character-based. This is probably a bit of both, really. It's got some strong characters, but it also is a plot-based thing. It's, it moves. It's like a, a road road flick kind of story, basically. Uh, so, so, yeah, knowing how it's going to end it does give away some of the punch of how the story's going to happen. But uh, we can still appreciate how it's, uh, how it's being presented, how it's being produced. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so we're looking forward to episode two. Um, what other little tidbits do we have? Um, yeah, look for, you know, Shadow's, um, burgeoning awareness. At the moment, he is kind of the only guy who doesn't know what's going on. It seems like pretty much everyone else has some idea of, like, what's going on. Well, um, of that world, right? Right. But we didn't really mention that. Well, the technical boy doesn't know what Odin is up to. True. He knows he's up to something. Right. And and right now, Od, uh, Shadow doesn't know what Odin's up to. So, yes. Okay. And right. he doesn't know uh, Balder or anything like that. He doesn't know anything about that. He doesn't know that he's even Odin. Right. At this point. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't know anything. Yeah. He knows nothing. He knows less than we do. Yes. He knows nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so we're excited about it. We will be back. Uh, talking about American Gods next week, yes. next Monday. Yes. Um, in the meantime, we will be putting up uh, leftovers. <laughs> putting up some leftovers. Uh, putting up our review of leftovers tomorrow. Yes. So each Monday will be American Gods. Each Tuesday will be the leftovers. Each Sunday, no, each Monday and each 
Piers Day. No, what? Oh, oh that's right. <laughs> each Moon Day yes, Moon and day. each Marty. Marty. Uh, we w- <laughs> will be doing those things. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, without further ado, uh, bye, everybody. We will see you soon. Oh, subscribe. Do the subscribing oh, yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. Push the button that does a subscribe. You get notifications. These flashy things, which is cool. All right. Uh, bye. Bye.